Good morning, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It is your boy Sleepy Riri, aka the unedited Andy, the one take wonder. We are here for another analysis video. And I say another because I've that's not true. I've never done one of these before. Hello! Usually we do this on stream, but here's what happened. I woke up on a crispy Wednesday afternoon, I would say morning, but that'd be me being a liar, and I saw that Pokemon dropped a new trailer called Seek Your Treasure. I've done some little bit of research on my own. I want to go ahead and look at the Pokemon website officially as well, but I do have some resources, some, some citations that I want to go through. But first and foremost, I want to watch this with you guys. Uh, normally I would wait till doing this on stream and we have a discussion like live, but today I know that I won't be streaming for a while or I'll be back until uh, Thursday? Yeah, I don't know, dates are hard, right? Anyway, I'm back until Thursday, so I figured I'd rather just do this now and upload some YouTube content, smile, <laughs> as opposed to me waiting till my stream or the next chance I'll have to talk about this live. So I won't. All right, here we go. Um, I have only seen this once, which means my tiny brain has not had a chance to grasp the information. And when I saw it, I just woke up. So I don't really have any real indication, but today we'll actually watch it. I'll feel like we're watching it for the first time together. And you'll actually know my takes. All right, here we go. First of all, first of all, I know you probably can't see over my fat head, but slow bro back, best timeline, incredible timeline. What a great day for slow bro fans overall. We love slow bro. You don't like slow bro? Unsub I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That thing, that thing. We're going back for this thing. So apparently, hold on, let me go ahead and yoink my own Twitter here. It's got to be somewhere. Uh, the page I'm going to use primarily is a page called uh, Central Leaks. Big shouts to the homies over at Central Leaks. Uh, they are the true king. Uh, this is a Pokemon called, I think it's called Craf or Quaff. <laughs> I forgot the name. Hold on, let me go ahead and yoink it for my fucking Twitter. We love this thing. Oh no, why do they have zero followers? Oh no. Did they get clapped? Surely, surely Central Leaks didn't get clapped live while I'm recording. No, that's not real. I, <laughs> I hope this is just some funny may may and Central Leaks did not get clapped while I am mid recording. Ain't no way. Well, the good thing is, is Central Leaks did get clapped mid-recording. We do have this bad boy here. This is Cloth. I am actually incorrect, as usual. Uh, this is a Pokemon with powerful claws. It's a rock type. Apparently, it can and will jump you, which I guess I'm into. Four foot three, 174 pounds. I guess it's a single Evo, which is cool, but it means I probably won't use it. I'm the kind of guy that, like, unless I'm really, really into a Pokemon, I probably won't use the Pokemon unless it, like, has a second Evo, because I don't like Pokemon that are below a certain stat level. There are some Pokemon I'll, I'll deal with it with, but otherwise, not so much. I think this is cool. I think it's cool that his eyes spin around. I love the whole furry crab aesthetic. I think it's funny as fuck. Anger Shell. Now, I may wind up using this, admittedly, and if I do, only because of Anger Shell. Anger Shell is an ability, um, when Cloth's HP drops to half or less, the Pokemon gets angry, and it lowers its special defense and defense stats, but boosts attack, special attack, and speed. This is basically built-in Shell Smash. So in theory, you could, shell, you could Shell Smash, take a hit, proc Anger Shell, and have double Shell Smash for free, if you, you know, want to take hits on purpose. I could see that making this Pokemon really good or good enough. Do I think it'll rule VGC? No, but I think you can make it a viable Pokemon for your playthrough or your casual battles. I like the idea of um, of Cloth. We'll go into more Pokemon later from Scarlet Violet. The roster's starting to fill out, so we'll also talk about these two. But for now, rest in peace Central Links if they have been clapped. And if they haven't been clapped, we move on. Now this, this I'm into. 
I admittedly, the part of me that's not into it is the part of me that's like, oh, god damn it. They have, they have another, um, they have another issue where the main antagonist isn't really threatening, right? And I'm a little bit bummed out about that, but at the same time, here's my thing. Remember from Generation 8, we had Team Yell, but the real antagonist was Oleana and Rose and the Construction Corp? I think if you, I think people didn't like Team Yell because their brain was like, oh, this is the main antagonist. No. Team Yell was never written to be the main antagonist. They just got in the way. And Team Star is obviously not the main antagonist. They're also probably just written to get in the way. They're supposed to be a funny, goofy team that gets in the way or is around the protagonist a lot, which is fine by me. I guess. I just wish... I don't know. I, I like it when they're written separately, but I also wish they were written directly into the story as well. You know? Does that make sense? Like... With Team Galactic or Team Plasma, we were always fighting the main antagonist. We always knew who the issues were. And I feel like people won't understand the writing um, if the actual antagonist is shoved into our down our throats at the end or towards the last couple badges. Because it feels like what'll happen is your main job, right? Actually, let me go to this. Hold on one second. I have a graphic for this. Thank you, Central Leaks. Um, oh, no. Maybe I don't have a graphic for this. Oh, no, they're back. Never mind. They're alive. Wait. <laughs> Central Leaks is alive. We're good. We're good, gamers. So, this is the graphic for Team Star. And there's a ca there's a constellation here um, that they follow. There's a fairy type, dark type, fire type, poison type, and fighting type, I guess. And these are your different Team Star bases. So, you go to all of them to eventually take down Team Star. But I really don't believe that these guys are evil. These are just This just feels like another Team Yell. Or another team skull, where again, they're not the real antagonist, they're just slight annoyances and kind of a side quest, and maybe they'll show some sort of help towards the actual antagonist, but no, I don't think team, uh, team, not team flare, sorry, I don't think team star is the real problem here. I think that deep down there'll be a different kind of antagonist, and that'll be the real issue, but you fight these guys on the side, which bums me out, but I also have faith that it'll be written well. But, moving on. Perfect. This shit right here. I'll let the video play all more. We'll get to you. We will get to you. Trust me. So, the thing you just saw, if I can yank my, my graphic again. Rest in peace, Centrally. The Pokemon Streets are trying to actively fight my kings at Centrally's. Where's the auto battle feature? I want to pull that graphic up for you guys. There we go. Um, so... As Central Leaks is confirmed, this has already been leaked, we already knew about this, this is kind of grass is green stuff, but it is really cool seeing it for the first time. Uh, these are automated battles, something that low-key I have been praying for for a long time in Pokemon. There are battles where you can simply throw your Pokemon towards the opposing uh, wild Pokemon, and you can stay to watch, or you can fucking walk away. And that is incredible. It's shown right here as well with Sprigatito fighting Lechonk in the wild, and my only concern is I don't know um, how catching would work if you're just going to go ahead and throw the Pokeball and then shoot the Pokemon and leave. That I'm confused about. I guess you would just do that, but if it is it... As seamless as it would be in Legends Arceus, is that being taken away from us? Um, if I want to catch the Pokemon, do I have to actually engage in a battle? That's what I want to know. If, if, if they're just regular auto battles, and I can just throw them on at them, and they'll level up, or they'll get experience, and I can walk away, incredible. But the real chef's kiss, the real chef's kiss, is if I can throw a Pokeball in the middle of that. Because respectfully, yes, I do think this should be the old RPG way of catching certain Pokemon. But there are also some times where I don't want to have to go through that cutscene every time. And I love everything about Pokemon. But, say for example, I'm trying to catch a wild Slowbro with a modest nature. Say I want that specifically. And I have to go through 18 different Slowpokes to find the perfect one. I love the catching animation, and I love catching a Pokemon. But no, I don't think I should have to do that every single time. I go through the exact battle scene, the cutscene for the catch, and all things afterwards just to catch a slow bro only to find out respectfully it's useless nature wise so hopefully 
that is the case. You can also catch as well. We'll see, but for right now, looks like it's just battling. Still great for experience, still great for training mons, and overall fluidity of the game. But the real truth, we'll be seeing if I can also catch them as well. But this is really cool. I like this a lot. You can see a wild Spigatito here um, doing scratch or whatever movie you want to call it. But Spigatito is also really small. I should have known that, I guess. Maybe, right? I would assume. I just feel like the starters are getting smaller. <laughs> Doesn't mean I don't like them. I love Quack Quaxley, um, Spiritito, and Fococo, but I just feel like this is a really tiny cat. Like, this is smaller than Eevee. Right? Any anyway, anyway, anyway. You. I, all I'm going to say, all I'm going to say is, all I'm going to say is I'm not going to say a word about this character until we have more information. However, regardless of what Twitter is saying, and we know Twitter is in an uproar right now, this character design is bad ass. It's so cool. This is such good character design. For a fire type leader or boss member or boss fight, whatever you want to call Mela, this is so cool. And Mela uses a Torkoal based. Now, what I want to know is apparently you have those fights like five times, right? Apparently, there's five different types of Team Star leaders all across the Paldea region. So, do you fight them in order? Can you go wherever you want? I mean, the game is teasing like pure open world, but gyms don't have scalings. I guess do, neither do these. So in theory, if I go from the first town and tell all the other trainers to suck my nuts and go to the, towards the most western part of the region, will the levels just be all like 50s and 60s? And if I get fucked, then get shit on, kid? Or will these scale? Does nothing scale? We'll have to find out. But again, moving on. Yeah, this thing is way bigger than I thought it would be. Okay, now, 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 now. This is what I want to talk about. I know we've seen Clough. I know what Clough does. But, let's see. Look at that. That has to imply some existence of alpha or different sized Pokemon. I mean, they gave us this version of Cloth in the game, which means the model size for something that big and adjusted sizes for Cloth are also in the game, in theory, right? So do I think that means alpha Pokemon running wild? Maybe not, maybe not, but it's possible. What I would love is if maybe there were more of these kinds of Titans, or even if there's just Cloth, right? I would love to be able to catch this big version of Cloth. If I could use big Cloth, I'm using this Pokemon, 2,000%. But if it's just, what would disappoint me is if they gave us giant Cloth and you could only use it, uh, or you could only battle it. Or if you caught it and it went down to regular size. Would hate that. Love this idea. I think this is such a cool like side quest or whatever you want to call it. I guess they're all technically main quests if you can do whatever you want, whenever you want in this game. But I would hope that you can actually catch this bad boy and use it. And I would love to see more Titans. That would be Paul. Great timeline. But we'll, I don't know. We'll see if Pokemon chooses to hurt my feelings or not with this one. Love the chance bringing the Vise back from Sword and Shield. Love Gita. Also, I will say it again, we've discussed this at length on my Twitch channel, uh, Sleepy Riri, twitch.tv, shameless plug, teehee. Um, but I don't think Nemona is all good. Uh, I believe we've discussed this, and their name translates uh, in Latin to nothing. And I don't think you would just call a regular good trainer who's just buddy-buddy and by your side nothing. 
Uh, the name loosely translates to nothing or meaning no value or whatever, um, which is fucked, but I'm sure there's a reason for that. Even if it just means that this is still your friend and a supporting actress, quote-unquote, right? Um, that means at bare minimum, I think Nimona has to have at least a more in-depth backstory, and at most, Loki, I think they could be the protagonist. I mean, sorry, the antagonist, or part of the antagonist play. Sunflora confirmed, this means nothing to me. Not a shred, a flake, a tiddlywink. However, I have some good homies, shout out Blinks, who love Sunflora and have not seen this motherfucker in a game in God knows how long. Wide people happy for those people. Love that. There's so many. Brashius also, we love this guy. I am a little disappointed because it feels like Brashius is going to be uh, an early game gym leader, or at least I know you can face the gyms in whatever order you want, but the levels don't scale, so he's still going to have the same team no matter what. And it bums me out that grass types are always seen as weak or early game because you can just grab a fire type and burn through the entire gym, which is true which is true, but there's also a way to make grass types look strong, and it feels like almost every time, or if not every time, grass types are represented, uh, you get this, and it's a great, it's a great gym leader, great design, I'm sure their Pokemon are great too, but I would like just for once for, for a grass type gym leader to be the 8th gym leader, or the 7th, or whatever, or even a fucking, um, Elite Four member and just ruin somebody's day, because it's possible, there are good grass types, and they can put up a fight, they're not just use flamethrower and win. Like a small live does not feel like this guy's character. But I guess so. This is also dumb. Blue Wudo? Bye. I want to talk about this. So, two things. Number one, very cool that gym leaders are using Pokemon that are not necessarily their typing, but terrestrializing them and making them their typing. Which has been done in the past where uh, fairy type gym leaders or water type gym leaders or whatever would use different types of Pokemon um, and then just put moves that they could learn of the actual type that they are on their team. But respectfully, that felt lazy. It feels lazy when I go into a gym um, and the Pokemon just happens to know Ice Punch. So close enough, they're an Ice type trainer, right? But they don't actually have enough Ice types in the region to do that. I think even if the region is like gen locked, or if you only have Pokemon from that generation or that dex in a region, that shouldn't apply to the gym leader. If Avalug isn't in your region, who cares? The ice type gym trainer should have it because they're a master of ice types. Well, that's just me. Second thing, Trailblaze, I think, is going to be a move that changes based on the terrestrialized type. That's my guess. I think Trailblaze will be a move that can be whatever you want it to be uh, or whatever the typing of your terrestrialize is, which will be insane. Insane for certain Pokemon. Another thing I've been thinking about for a long time is terrestrialized uh, Dragonite, which is fire type or was fire type in the trailer could be different but that thing learning terrestrialized trailblaze knocking away the ice resistance ooh wee that's my guess as to what trailblaze is have not confirmed that yet but we'll see Reloom also confirmed. Jump Bluff is great. These guys, these guys are sick. I need more information on these. I'm not a big fan of using legendaries on my team, but it's okay. That is why I brought up the actual Pokemon website. We have uh, Seraledge, and I believe the alternative name or is Armor Rogue. Both these are really cool. At first, I like Seraledge a lot, but as I... I I think I'm, like, in love with Armor Rogue. This thing's really cool. It's Fire Psychic, the Fire Warrior Pokemon. 
through Pokemon Scarlet, I'll be able to encounter this, which is fine, because I was going to pick Scarlet anyway, so this is a win for me. I will eventually be owning and playing both copies, but my initial playthrough on my Twitch, the first one I'll do that's probably going to be a 24-hour stream, um, that one will be on Scarlet, for sure. Which is cool, because I want to use this thing, I really do. Flash Flyers is a cool ability, I like the hide and weight, it looks like a cool-ass Pokemon. Armor Cannon, let's see. I'm interested. Huh. Well, we'll find out more, I guess. Who knows? I, I really can't describe or figure out what the hell this thing is. I know it evolves from something, and we have leaks that confirm that. But, oh well, we'll see. Moving on. Oh, you know what I just realized? I completely ignored. I completely ignored Sarah Ledge. I was so busy being like, I like this one. Ooh. Now, I thought this one would have been Dark Psychic. It is actually Fire Ghost. That's really cool. Huh. Bitter Blade? Damn it, this is cool. Fuck. I think I would obviously rather have Armor Rogue, but Sarah Ledge also very cool. Very edgy, we love that. Great timeline. Uh, I, I'll take both. <laughs> if both are given to me, or if I can receive both poggers, but... I am perfectly fine using Armor Rogue. If Armor Rogue is regularly encounterable, and it's not a legendary, I'll probably use it. I'm just not a big fan of using legendaries on my main team. Um, but if you do, more power to you. This would be a great addition to the team. Another reason I'm picking Quaxley. Crash fly shown again. Very nice. Same old due date, same old release date. Which is fine by me. I'm very excited about it. Anyway, those are my points. I think, quite frankly, a couple things before I get off here. This is a really good game. It's going to be a really good game, in my opinion. I think that there's so much good being shoved in our face. We are being fed with so much good, and there's so much stuff we don't even know yet. Respectfully, I don't see how this is bad. I, I'm, I'm so lost as to how this could be a bad game. A lot of the classic Pokemon are there. The brand new Pokemon so far have been interesting and incredible. Um, the character design is 10-10. The region is massive. This is supposedly bigger than all of the maps in Legends RC is combined by about 20%. I don't know what more you could ask for as a fan. In my opinion, I don't know what more you could ask for. And this is only them scratching the surface. I know we still have more trailers. We'll probably get another trailer in October and maybe one more in November. And my guess is two more and we're done -zo. And then after that, we'll just have to wait for the main game, which is fine by me. I genuinely feel like this is the most we've been fed in a long time. Someone correct me if that's not true, but I feel like this is the most we've been fed in a long fucking time. We'll have to see how this goes. Everything's great. I have nothing bad to say. If you've got negative stuff to say about this game, respectfully, get away from me. I'm going to simply go ahead and enjoy happy Pokemon game and not worry about strong criticism yet. Sometimes, I feel like as Pokemon fans, we honestly forget to just sit back and enjoy the fucking game. Like, of course, yes, it's good that we hold Pokemon to a standard. It is good that we are concerned about the product. It is good that we want things to change. Yes, all those things, yes. Because if you just go by life, and say, oh yeah, everything good all the time. You won't actually make any changes. But, but it is exhausting that everything that seems to come out of the Pokemon community's mouth is negative, and I don't want that. I don't want to deal with that. For five seconds, I'm just going to shut up and be happy about brand new game. Of course, eventually, the dust will settle, the stew will boil, or whatever you want to call that, whatever the metaphor is, I don't care. And I'll, I'll figure out some bad things about this game, sure. But for right now, just for five seconds, I just want to be happy about brand new cool Pokemon game. Anyway, that's it for me. That's it for me, the one take wonder. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording and not edit this and upload this raw to YouTube. Because why not? Anyway, bye guys. See you on the 18th.